Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates. And this evening we'll be having a look at the latest GFS uh, GFS ensembles and then we'll have a look at various weather models at uh, the prospects for some snow Sunday night into Monday, uh, through Monday and Tuesday. Now we'll run through the GFS quickly just to give the overall pattern what we could be seeing over the next few weeks. Now do remember if you enjoyed my video make sure you do like and subscribe as it really does help me out. Now I'm currently having a look at the GFS uh, and right now we've got air of high pressure over the top of us. We've got sort of a northeasterly breeze and which means for many eastern areas and southern areas where we've got more of that breeze. Uh, it's actually been quite a chilly day, only 9, 10 degrees, feeling quite cold in that wind. Towards Scotland where we're more towards the centre of the high and less of a, an easterly or northeasterly breeze. It's actually quite mild today, maybe 14, 15 degrees. Warmest temperatures have been in uh, Scotland today, um, but overnight tonight there will be again an overnight frost in local air, localized areas um, before more widespread frost come over the next few nights. But as we run through, you see that high pressure moving up towards Greenland and that northerly plunge setting up. We see that polar plunge coming really overnight into Monday, and that's that weather front moves through the country um, through uh, the early mornings of early morning of Monday. Now that's the most uh, probable chance that you will see snow um, for w widely really. Uh, weather front will be moving through, we'll have convective showers along it and that could give widespread sort of wintry showers. We'll have a look at the precipitation in a minute and we are starting to see patterns of where there could be potentially uh, more snow and where areas could see it could uh, not be seeing a lot of snow at all. But we'll have that really long fetch northern wind all the way from the North Pole and Svalbard. You see the minus 10 line gets through the whole country, potentially even go down to minus 12, minus 13, 850 HPA, which really is brutally cold. Again, if we saw this in any of the winter months, we would not be seeing daytime highs above freezing pretty much for the whole country. So, yeah, really exceptional air mass coming across um, uh, the country, uh, and this would be exceptional even in winter, let alone um, in e at Easter uh, and in April. But as we continue running through, we'll remain on the uh, temperature charts just to give to show you what sort of air masses we're going to be in. We maintain this sort of northerly wind, remain, ma remaining in that very cold air mass. And talk about Wednesday, where we start to put in more westerly winds. Probably will introduce a bit more precipitation, but that will mainly be rain over lower levels. Before more low pressures out in the uh, North Sea uh, and towards the north of Scotland, and we do start to pull down northerly winds once again, mainly for Scotland and parts of Northern Ireland and Ireland. But it does look like that potentially could sweep through the whole country. Another cold front moves through. Not as potent this one, but still quite cold and will give overnight frost. As you can see, it's under a ridge of higher pressure. Again, a few wintry showers with, around with that. But it's not looking like it's really warming up at all um, until uh, or for, for the next week at least. Next week could be quite a cold week where temperatures quite widely don't really get above uh, maybe 8 or 9 degrees even in the warmest um, spots. Beyond that, though, high pressure does build in with a southwesterly wind, and we do get weather fronts moving in, which will bring rain, but also much milder conditions. And especially further southwards, under that area of high pressure, we could be seeing again temperatures really climbing back up into the mid to high teens, or even low twenties, um, and quite widely quite warm conditions. Further northwards, always got those westerly winds. So there's a chance we do see rain and more cloud with that. But generally, further southwards looking quite slack um, with the flow, quite warm air over the top of the country. So again, we could be seeing some very pleasant conditions for that in the longer term. Now it is 10 days or more out, so it's quite unlikely at this stage this is exactly how it's going to plan out. But it just it just gives you the idea that it's looking like high pressure. It's generally going to be more in control with that Euro high um, as uh, the lower pressure moves back towards the Arctic. We'll now briefly have a look at the GFS ensembles. This is the midday run. It hasn't quite fully come out, but we can see out to the 13th of April where scatter really starts to come. You can see this big cold front, 15 degrees, potentially even more than some of the ensemble members. As that cold front sweeps through Sunday night into Monday, around 5 degrees at the moment, 850 HPA, but as you feel, to, as most of you have felt today, it's been quite chilly as we have had a northeasterly breeze with a lot of cloud around, so temperatures really haven't risen that much, raining around 9, 10, 11 degrees. When that cold front does come through, though, it's going to feel really bitterly cold. Even though temperature on the thermometer most likely will be between 4 and 6 degrees quite widely, and even colder over hills, 
uh, it's going to feel below freezing quite widely, uh, especially towards northern eastern coast. It's going to feel really bitter as that northerly wind moves in. We remain at that very cold air mass, uh, around minus 10 at 850 HPA, for a good two, maybe three days, full temperatures start to rise up again. But as we saw by that GFS run, it doesn't really get up to any um, any level. It remains below average, maybe three or four degrees below average. And again, some ensemble members are predicting we do see another northerly blast. Not as cold this time, but still maybe getting down to potentially minus 10 at 850 HPA, especially further northwards, again, allowing potential for um, some uh, wintry showers and some quite harsh overnight frosts. If we do have a look at um, precipitation, you see generally it's quite dry. Now with this potentially uh, wintry spell uh, early next week, it's going to be mainly dry. There are going to be some wintry showers around and those will steal the headlines. Um, but we're not really expecting to see anything significant other than sort of northern Scotland where we do have weather warnings in force. And we'll have a look at those at the end of the video. But generally, many central areas, uh, western areas and even eastern areas will likely see some showers, but not too much accumulating precipitation. Um, and and we'll, that'll highlight on the, weather, uh, on the precipitation charts in a minute. Longer term, again, generally quite dry. So although it's going to be quite cold, it's going to be generally dry. Yes, some wintry showers around. But it's not going to be a total washout with snow or, or, or rain. If we now have a look at the GFS precipitation charts, we'll have a look at the precipitation charts for the GFS, then we'll have a look at the te its temperatures, and then we'll look at precipitation charts for other models. Right now, very dry, a few showers over northern Scotland, and then we see that deluge of those northerly winds coming. And along that cold front, you see those a lot of convective showers, lots of specks of white. So it's going to be hit and miss where we see the heavier, heavier precipitation and lighter precipitation. But it's looking like quite, looking quite likely that most areas will see some precipitation early morning on Monday. Snow really impacting northern Scotland. You can see it's really persistent along there. Potentially for some more snow to come inland, uh, snow and sleet, uh, hail to come inland overnight Monday. But you see generally central areas fairly dry. Further eastwards, northwards and westwards, snow showers peppering in. And it is, in these sort of scenarios, it's quite uncertain how far inland they get. Slight uh, shift in the wind direction can bring them much further inland. If you get a conversion zone, could come much further inland. So at the moment, Definitely on the coasts uh, and maybe 50 miles inland is looking quite quite likely you do see quite a few wintry showers. Further inland than that, again, it's quite unsure, uh, unsure at this stage. It does look like early uh, into Tuesday we see more persistent snow potentially moving in for eastern areas and maybe southwestern areas as well. Um, and then we see generally dry, still some snow showers around, and then weather fronts move in as it tends to go a little bit milder, generally mostly rain, maybe snow over Scottish hills before we get that northerly plunge again, with again widespread snow, the showers do die out, and then we go generally dry once again. One of the probably the biggest uh, effect uh, or impact from this uh, northerly boss will be the temperatures. A lot of people love wintry showers, snow, etc., but it's really going to be those temperatures that cause significant impacts, because any snow we do see is likely to melt very quickly if it does accumulate at all, uh, and generally won't be affecting many, uh, any settling snow at the moment. It's only likely over hills, and not really where it could cause many impacts. The biggest impact will be uh, the ice uh, and the very frosty uh, conditions and very low temperatures because they could really damage plants uh, and give um, some travel hazards when most expect it to be spring-like. And we had 20 degrees earlier this week, would you believe it? Um, but if we run through, you can see generally 9, 10 degrees today overnight. It drops to around 1, 2, 3 degrees. Nothing brutally cold, but again, potential for an overnight frost. We do see clear skies. Um, and as we move into Sunday, maybe 13, 14 degrees, because the colder air is coming in from the north, uh, and then widely overnight, uh, over on Monday, brutally cold, especially in the north. Further southwards, maybe 4 or 5 degrees, uh, maybe 7 degrees towards the southwest, but again, feeling bitterly cold. Overnight Monday, going to be very cold, minus 1, minus 2 quite widely, maybe a touch above freezing towards the coast, but generally a widespread frost to start Tuesday. Uh, again, four or five degrees on Tuesday, but it looks like the, probably the coldest night 
it's going to be Wednesday where we could be seeing minus two, minus three, or minus four degrees quite widely. Um, really hard overnight frost and can damage quite a few plants with that. Wednesday again, quite cold, seven or eight degrees before heading into Thursday. Another overnight frost, but generally only for the south as westerly winds are starting to come in for the north. We won't go beyond that as again it's becoming a bit more inaccurate as we move through. We'll now have a look at the GM model, having a look at what precipitation type it is forecasting. If we have a look through Sunday, we see those weather fronts move down, a lot of convection showers, potentially showing a more enhanced area of snow and precipitation for eastern England, East Anglia in the southeast, parts of the Midlands as well. So interesting to see that, 9am on Monday, but generally most of the showers for Northern Ireland, Northern Scotland as well. As we move through, we see a lot of snow, especially further westwards. We see some snow streamers and showers, perhaps for eastern areas and over Scotland as well, Northern Ireland, parts of Ireland as well, looking like the most likely areas. We do see more showers moving in um, on Wednesday and Tuesday afternoon, quite widely uh, for central, eastern, and southern and western areas of England, parts of Wales as well, before showers do generally start to die out as we move into Wednesday. It's very interesting to see there different precipitation um, uh, than the GFS was showing. GM was even showing uh, more enhanced features, especially even on Monday. So it just shows you how uncertain it is where, those preci where that precipitation is going to be. It's definitely looking like we're going to see some big convective uh, showers, some beefy showers out there. But it's just going to be very uncertain to, uh, as to where they're going to um, crop up. So it's really going to, be, going to have to look at your radars and keep uh, up to date with your apps as well um, for any showers that do come around. We'll now have a look at the Icon model. Again, Icon model is not great at forecasting how inland stuff comes, but you know, it's generally just another model to have a look at. But if we run through, you see quite widely we've got. Uh, convective showers moving southwards, nothing too major on the uh, icon, but generally just show precipitation around. It will be more enhanced in, uh, in some regions and then lighter in other regions. It's going to be really hard to forecast exactly where we're going to see the heaviest precipitation with that. But waking up on Monday, it could be pretty wild out there if you are under that cold, cold front, quite squally winds, potentially hail and snow in that, and a very sharp temperature drop as it comes through maybe five degrees temperature drop in a space of half an hour. Beyond that, mainly snow showers into northern Scotland, um, perhaps parts of the west and eastern England as well. Not showing too many coming inland, but that's typical of the icon. So I do suspect those will come further inland. Um, but generally, central areas will be probably faring best um, for snow showers, but that will mean overnight temperatures could drop even further as they have more clear skies. But again, showing maybe Tuesday afternoon, similar to EGM. Uh, perhaps a more, uh, more unstable air moves through as we um, see more sh uh, snow showers and wintry showers come further inland. So that's one to watch for Tuesday afternoon. So both the icon and the GEM were showing that. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Um, beyond that, perhaps a more enhanced area of snow within like, sort of an occluded front, essentially moving through northern England into East Anglia in the southeast. So again, we'll watch that quite. Uh, we'll watch that. Not showing on any other models, so again, could just be a feature the icon is showing, but again, it's still a few days out, so we just need to keep keep watch on the models. We'll lastly, have a look at the Arpege. It has come into the Arpege's time frame. Um, we'll run through this quickly. Again, the Arpege does sometimes underdo precipitation a little bit, but it generally does show that cold front moving through. Um, some convective showers. doesn't show the snow too well, but they will be quite wintry within that. Again, into Monday afternoon, you see a lot of showers of North Scotland, Northern Ireland, Eastern England as well, parts of the West as well. Again, not showing as much snow as the other models. Again, I do suspect it is underplaying a little bit. Again, yes, Tuesday afternoon, showing more widespread wintry uh, showers for central, eastern and western areas. So one to watch Tuesday afternoon. But we still have very cold air around. We four or five degrees. We could see um, some quite uh, wild conditions out there with some very heavy showers moving through. And generally, beyond that, uh, it does look like it will dry. It will become much more dry. But then that will probably allow temperatures to drop even further Tuesday night into Wednesday. 
Lastly, we'll have a look at the snow and ice warnings. Same warnings for Sunday and Monday, um, but we've had another warning for the Northern Isles of Scotland uh, for wind of, sn wind of snow. We only had the snow warning over Northern Scotland yesterday, so we've got another warning for wind and snow over the Northern Isles. Frequent snow and hay showers are compensated by a very strong northerly winds, potentially 50 to 70 mile an hour winds, I saw. Um, um, accumulated snow is mainly over 200 metres, but one to three centimetres is quite likely overnight. Gales expected to be uh, with the snow showers, gusts 50 to 60 or maybe 70 miles an hour, giving potentially temporary blizzard conditions and quite rough seas out there as well. Um, and you can see quite likely with that uh, and generally high impact as well. So very interesting to see um, these snow warnings get uh, released and we'll interesting to see how much they verify. Um, I do suspect at this stage, I don't think the Met Office is going to um, give a snow warning uh, for anywhere else uh, at this stage. There's potential they could give a snow warning in the next day or two if more models converge on uh, on a solution for uh, sort of a convergent zone or occluded front or whatever. Because at this stage, as you saw with those precipitation charts, um, they're very all over the place, not really got a, a main consensus where any frequent snow showers could be other than really northern Scotland. So I suspect this stage there won't be any snow warnings enforced, but I do suspect there could be um, there could be uh, there could be some uh, an ice warning in force uh, perhaps uh, for Tuesday and Wednesday. But anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed subscribing, and I'll see you again for another video soon.